Back in 1955, Ed Miranda hired my dad, Johnny Freitas, to work at the Miranda Upholstery Shop in Oakland, California. Ed and Dad worked side by side together for over 20 years and became lifelong friends. When Ed retired, he left the thriving upholstery shop to Dad. In 2009, when I'm recording this, the Freitas Upholstery Shop is operated by my dad and my son, James Luker. What you are about to hear is Ed Miranda's life story. An interview with Grandpa Ed. This is Jerry Freitas, Johnny Freitas' daughter. I just want to take a minute to read the note that was left in the original cassette recording of this interview. It goes like this. Hello. Well, it's finally done. 47 minutes of Grandpa Ed Miranda talking a little bit about his life are now preserved digitally onto compact disc. Thanks go to my brother David for taking the time to get these great stories recorded in April 1992 while in the car driving to the Hickory Pit. I'll never forget that good old brown sauce. Grandpa was 82 years old and his wonderful sense of timing and humor shines throughout these stories. Enjoy! Mike, October 2000. Like that, and then they they came like that, and then they went around the back. 
the same way. And did, did that car did that car start with a key, or did you have to crank? Did you have a crank on the front of that? Oh, well, it, 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 it had a self starter. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know what year model it was, but it was probably it was probably a. Uh, uh, a 1919 or something oh, yeah. like that because huh. I don't think they made cars during the war so that was your, your family on your uh, on your dad's on, on side on my dad's side do you remember your family from your mom's side on, on my mother's side uh, Nana was my mother's mother uh -huh. my grandmother she lived uh, close to us while I was growing up. So I knew her quite well. In, in Oakland? In Oakland. Uh -huh. And then uh, uh, she had a mother and father. Her mother and father, which were my great-grandparents, they lived They lived in Oakland, up in the, in the hills, and they, they lived in a little cottage with their oldest son. He was a wid widower. And uh, he lived, he was a tile worker, as I recall. Uh -huh. He made, made tiles for and what did your, what, uh, what did your grandpa do? Do you remember your grandpa and your mother's son? Well, I don't know. He was an old, old man. I don't know what he did, but he had, they, had, they had come up from uh, Hawaii. They lived, they lived in Hawaii and they... They lived in that little town in Hawaii. On the Big Island? Uh, I can never think of the name of that, that island. Uh, uh, no, on Maui. Oh, on Maui? Yeah. They were all, uh, always lived on Maui. Did they ever tell you about that? Uh, about living in Maui? Well, uh, Nana did. Oh, yeah? Sure, because... What did she say? Hawaii she got like married that? on Maui. Oh, really? And my mother was born on Maui. Really? Yes. And then, uh, and then they, they moved to California. And... Uh, the uh, Nana and her husband and my grandfather, uh, and as I, I never saw him, he died, but uh, uh, he, he was a big, a big man with red whiskers and red, red hair. <laughs> oh, yeah? He had something to do with cattle. Uh -huh. they, lived, they lived in a little town where they, where they lived. Muckawow. Muckawow? Muckawow. That was the town they lived in? <laughs> that was the name of the town. And he was, that a, was he where was a, my mother he was born. There. They raised cattle in Muckawow? Well, around that area, yeah. And it's still it's still cattle country because I've been there. It's part way up the uh, the uh, mountain where people go go to see the sunrise all the time. Right. It's a very popular place. Uh -huh. They go up there and they... they they, uh, they go up in buses and come back on bicycles. Why did they move to California? Yeah? Uh, he had he, he had three daughters. Actually, he had four daughters. Four daughters, all told. But three daughters were born there in, in, on Maui, and he said that he wasn't going to raise daughters to to mix in with with uh, the uh, natives and uh, oh, yeah. with the Orientals. So then, your your family lived in Oakland, right? Yeah. You. What, what did your What did your parents do? Well, my dad worked in a factory. Uh -huh. What kind of a factory? You remember? Yeah, they manufactured uh, roofing materials. Oh yeah. And uh, and paint, things that you know, building materials. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, my mother never worked. After all, I had four sisters. Right. What were they? What do you remember about your sisters? What were they like? Do you remember what it was like to live with them? Well, our sisters. They're all gone now, but right. uh, uh, one was older than I am, and, and three of them were younger. Uh -huh. The youngest two were twins, but they weren't like tw uh, like twins. They were absolutely opposite. Oh yeah. Uh, so you remember, what were your 
your sisters like back then when you were living at home? They were very short. <laughs> All I, was, I was the tallest one in the family. Really? I was taller than my dad. Other at our lockers. 
what was the first thing we did was to go look for our lockers. We had keys, and our lockers were right next to each other. And then we went to class, and by golly, the, the very first class we were together. <laughs> we, found, we found we were in several classes together. So have you, have you and Heath always, always lived near each other? I mean, no, we didn't live very close. Uh, Heath lived up in Berkeley, and I lived in Oakland. Oh yeah. So how often did you get to see it? We had we had bicycles. We each had bicycles. We were always going over one another's house. And then when we started working in the, we were still 15 years old. We started working at the Examiner. Uh -huh. And uh, you worked there together. And we worked together. Both of them. The uh, a crew like that. They uh, they hired they they hired. Each week to to do that that week's uh, papers, see, which consisted of Friday and Saturday night both. Right. And uh, uh, you'd go over on a Friday afternoon right after school, and you'd just show up and be part of the crowd, and he'd come through with his with his with his clipboard. And uh, he'd, spot, he'd spot us and he'd put our name down. We were on the crew for that week. For four years, I never missed a beat. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. So you worked, you worked at that the examiner all through high school? Oh, yeah, all through high school. Huh. And uh, uh, we got 50 cents an hour. Pretty good pay for a kid at that time. And, uh, of course, they weren't all kids. Uh, most of them were, were college kids. And, uh, and a lot of them had, had been doing it for years and years and years. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It took, some, it took an awful big crew to, to get out the full Sunday edition. I mean, yeah. See, none of it. None of it was done by machine or anything. You had to take and insert all those pictures. Holding hands at midnight neath the starry sky. Nice work if you can get it, and you can get it if you try. Strolling with What else do you remember from high school? Besides, besides going to school and, and working and stuff, what did, were you involved? Did you, did you play? Oh, I wasn't, like I wasn't involved in anything when it came to work. I worked after school every night, approximately every night, yeah. and uh, worked weekends. There was no, no time for any high school activities, really. What about I remember going to a, one of the dances. What was that like? Was that the one you said you had to sit there after? Yeah, there was something about it. Oh, no, 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 no. I never did sit in one of those. Oh, you never did? Oh, no, I was just telling you, which you oh, okay. at amusement parks. Oh, those things are just, just props. They'd have an amusement parks. They look like a half. People would sit in them and get their picture taken. Right. Who <laughs> remember seeing pictures like that? Yeah. So, out of, out of old albums. Do you, do you remember that dance? The dance? Yeah, the dance. You oh, I remember it was in the girls' gym. They used to have weekly dances in the girls' gym. Uh, it's all right. Do you remember who you went with? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not a bit. No, it wasn't a bunch. So what are, besides, besides going to movies and stuff, what other, what other kind of major activities would you do? Either as a, as a, uh, in high school or after, after you graduated? What kind of things would like, you and Keith would go out with? What kind of things do you guys do? Heath wasn't here. Heath was back with his dad oh, in Michigan, a good right. part of the time. Yeah. He kept going back and forth. Uh, Heath didn't even graduate from high school when I did. He still had a year to make up. Huh. On account of he, uh, he had got sick. He got sick and... and uh, 
time he got over that, his, his mom shipped him off to his dad. Oh, yeah? But why, why, did he, why did he have to go out to Virginia? Well, that's where his dad lived, in Grand Rapids. Right. But she didn't want him, she didn't want Heath around anymore, is there? Well, she didn't, he, after all, he was a, he was a teenager, and, and she was working full time, and, and uh, she thought, figured that, that uh, his dad should take some of the responsibility of what he did and everything. Do you still see Heath around? Oh, yeah, there'd be, there would be spells of, of years in between. Like when he when he got married, it was several years before I saw him. Right. And it was the war that brought us together because they they came right out so when the war broke out because they uh, he wanted to to uh, to work for him in the war plan in California rather than they were they had been living in Rochester, New York. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So. He worked for Boston, Boston Home, and uh, he, he figured he'd rather, rather work for a plant in the Bay Area. Right. Good chance to come out here. So uh, they came out, and uh, they stayed with they stayed with us on Crane Way for about a week or so, and then they found a, found a place to rent. When did you start working on a ship? Oh, that was during the Depression. Oh, that was during the 30s? Oh, yeah. Uh, so what did you what did you spend your time doing during the, during the, the 20s? I mean, during your... Uh, your well, I went... Uh, I, I graduated from high school. And I, I what, went, year did you, what year did you graduate from high school? Uh, December of 1927. Oh, 27? Uh, I, uh... So you were basically a teenager during the 20s, then? Yeah. So by the time you were my age, say 23, 24, it was already in fact. Right? Oh yeah, that was when I probably was on that boat. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> ship. Yeah. I was an oiler on the engine boat. Were you, was that a military When I ship? told your dad, daddy laughed, laughed. <laughs> I kind of, oilers get black. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what is it, what is the oiler like? What was it? They job? used to call us the black man. You just made sure that they, all the, all the, uh, well, you have to go. You have to go through the engine room once every hour, and you oil everything that needs oiling. That's what. It, that's what the job amounted to. You, uh, you started out with the engine room, and you, you went from top to bottom, and you oiled up all, all, all the small, the small steam engines. You know. Was that a full day of work? And, uh, the oil as it. Oh no, it was very easy too. Yeah. And, uh, and then then I'd take my oil can and I'd, I'd go down through the shaft dowel. You know what the shaft dowel here on the ship is? It goes from the, the, the shaft, which is the bottom of the engine room, and right down at the very bottom of the, of the, of the uh, ship. And the shaft itself is about that big around. That goes from the engine, which is midships, all the way back to the back end of the ship, and turns the, uh, the propeller. And so you have a shaft alley. You have a little walkway, and you have this alley. You you kind of stoop. I was small, so it didn't matter. I you know I didn't have any problem getting through. And uh, and you and you have all these these uh, these uh, uh, bearings that the shaft goes through. And these bearings are riding in oil all the time, but they have to be, be checked every hour to make sure that they aren't warming up. Because it'd be uh, a real calamity to have one of them burn out. Right. Well, Did you ever have any problems like that? Anything? No. Yeah. No. No, I checked them very closely. We all did. So what, what were you doing on it? Was it a trade ship or was it? Oh yeah, it was a freighter. Uh-huh. It was a freighter. It was full of freight. Where did you Where did you take it to? Where did the ship go? What? Uh, it went all along the coast, and uh, it went up into uh, into Canada, and we loaded it in, in Canada. We would 
we would go to a small town where there was a, a uh, where all, all the only thing there was in the town was a mill uh, making making newsprint. And the newsprint comes in great big heavy rolls. You know, they they stand almost as high as this car. And uh, where where was that? That was in Canada. Oh yeah, up in Canada. And uh, up there were all trees, you know. Right. You know, that's where they get to make the, the newsprint out of it. These uh, trees, these pine trees. And uh, we'd lo load up with, with all that stuff and bring it down to Seattle and San Francisco, to Los, Los Angeles. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so you went all the way from LA. And yeah. Did you ever go down to San Diego, too? Yeah. Uh, did you go yeah. to Mexico? No. No, I never did. But when when the ship w was going to go down through Mexico and down through the Panama Canal, uh, uh, I quit the ship because uh, uh, engine rooms get terribly hot, and uh, you're, you're you're dependent on the uh, ventilation coming down. You know, from up top. You, you've right. seen these things on. Uh, on a ship, you know, they, you turn them into the wind, uh -huh. and, they, right. and they ventilate the engine room. Right. And uh, if that's hot, that wind is hot, why well, it isn't going to be any good. Right. Yeah, and, that was uh, miserable. So and that's and yeah, you have, have all that, that heat. And the thing is that I was getting nosebleeds from the heat, and so I, uh, and so I quit the ship. Tufts of, uh, of the uh, 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 
bristle in there in the brush, and then uh, and then the th the brush was taken and, and put through a, a shaver thing that that would cut them all off even, so they were just absolutely even. And those were called thicker brushes. I used to the old brush heads were about that long, oh yeah, and about that wide, and they had a whole bunch of. I used to know how many, just how many. Uh, Bristles uh, and really? and everything. <laughs> but the thing is, is that I got four cents a piece for for sewing up those. Oh, okay. Those. Uh, how quickly do you think you put together one of those? Oh, I could, my hands would fly. I could, I could do a hundred thousand. Really? Sure. I don't remember how fast. I so did. you were, you were, you were getting an hourly wage. You were just getting paid by. Oh, that's right. Piece work. Oh, that's that's pretty good then. So the oh, yeah. Work, paid. work my head off, and I can make as much as fifty cents an hour. Which was a lot of money back then, right? It wasn't a lot of money, but uh, it was a suitable wage. So it was only four dollars a day. So, well, how long did you live in Michigan for? Oh, a little over a year. And that was? Did you move out there after you graduated from high school? No, I worked. I worked in San Francisco for a year and a half first. Oh, okay. And I went. So I worked in San Francisco in a in a, uh, a, a, a an office job. I was an office boy. Like an errand? Yeah. First I was a messenger boy, and, and then I was the office boy. And I started in at, at $60 a month, and after 18 months they gave me a $5 raise. And uh, uh, I was wearing out my shoes faster than, than they were paying me to buy new ones. Sixty dollars a month is, is very oh, little, and I had to pay I had to pay six and a half a month uh, to commute to San Francisco. And then I had to pay board and room at home. I didn't have any money left over, really? and I had to wear a suit every day. It wasn't a very uh, a very good job. When you moved back from Michigan, is that when you when you got on the boat? Yeah, but not right away. Right. You know, there was a lot of jobs in between. Right, like that, I worked. Yeah. I worked in a garage. I worked. I, I worked for Uncle Dude. I don't know if you remember Uncle Dude or not. No, I don't know. Uncle well, anyway, he was a builder, and uh, and uh, whenever he had a, a, a job of, of building a new house or, or repairing a like place or something, uh -huh. well, then he would give me a job as a helper. See? Okay. Yeah. Right. I was getting to be a pretty fair mechanic, a pretty fair carpenter. And then that, that served me in good stead when the when the war first broke out, I had to go into a war plant and, and uh, leave the, the upholstery jo job that I had. Right. And uh, I went in as a carpenter. What kind of carpentry were you doing during the war? Well, during the war, during the war, I only worked there for one year before I, I went into the shipyards and worked in asbestos. The first year of the war in 1942, I. Uh, I, I worked at uh, Production Engineering was the name of the company, and uh, uh, I was I was doing real real heavy stuff. There were several of us, and uh, we, we were doing uh, I can't think of the name of it, but it, it, it's it's a pretty rough type of carpentry. So after you got back from the ship, when did you when did you finally start working in the Pulse Street? 
pretty good quality of furniture, upholstered furniture. And uh, they had, uh, they, they built the frames there. They had a frame shop. They built the frames. And then they had a crew that uh, put the springs in, sprung, sprung them all up. Got all the springs into the job, all tied down and all. And then the upholsterers, and that, that's what, what I was, an upholsterer, we, we took the job from there and finished it up so that it was ready to go into somebody's home. So after the war, you'd save enough money to open up your own, your own business? Yeah, after the war. Then I uh, went in with some other guys, and, uh, and I was a partner. Oh, okay. And what did, did they do the same thing that you did? Were, they, were you all upholsterer? No, I was the only upholsterer. One was a salesman, and one was a... Was a uh, Two of them were salesmen, and one was a one was an accountant. Did you buy the frames already pre-made and the springs put together and everything? So you, you oh no, them. we start we 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 start right in making good frames. Oh, you made, oh, you made your own frames. That's right. Oh, okay. Who would who would make the frames and the springs? Well, we hired a guy that that uh, was pretty good at woodworking, uh-huh. you know, in a shop, in a cabinet shop, and. Uh, I just told them how, how I wanted those frames. So we had to design, we designed a whole line of furniture. And, uh, oh, you designed your own furniture? We designed a whole line. We had a catalog and all. Everything was fine. Everybody made money except the owners. You ran that business then until you, until you retired? I, I, uh, I left it. I, I quit and, and got out of that business in 19, uh, 50, 1955. And I, uh, I opened up a shop with one employee, that was Johnny. Uh, he had worked for me from the time he got out of the Navy oh, yeah. uh, after World War II, and I taught him everything I knew. And uh, he still got the shop. Oh, what little more like can do? Oh, 1955 was the year that they, that they made me Cub Scoutmaster. Who made you Cub Scoutmaster? Well, Tom, uh, Tom was the one that was the culprit. He was in the Cub Scouts. And they said they needed somebody to, to be the Cub Master. Oh, yeah? And Tom volunteered. So what did that entail? What, what, what did you have to do as a Cub Master? Oh, well, I had to I had to attend those meetings every... We got together every every week. Oh, yeah? Sure. Did you ever take them out on trips? Camping, that sort of thing? No, we didn't... They didn't go camping. It the, was the... Uh, they, they, we went on day trips. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, such as what? Yeah, the Cubs don't don't go camping like Boy Scouts. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the Cubs. Yeah, are camping, right. Yeah, okay, because the Cubs are only eight years old. They start. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Huh. But the uh, you know, Boy Scouts certainly. Uh, well, I, I was an assistant to the Boy Scout master when they were when they were scouts. So did you, was, was Bill involved in that too? Oh yeah, Bill, Bill was ahead though. I, I wasn't involved with, uh, with uh, Bill as a cub. I was sure involved with Tom as a cub. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Late 50s. How, how did you meet her? You guys well, she was in the organ group. She called me up and, and 
invited me over to her house on a, on a small, small organ room. So we went. Did you have, every, and everybody would sit down and play organs, or would you go to do Oh yeah, we took turns. Oh, okay. We took turns. Uh, some weeks you wouldn't, wouldn't do it.
see. Yeah. yeah. See, I would have gone the other way, and I don't know where I would have gone. Well, uh, there is no other way because uh, they closed. Right there, the Hickory Pit, right? Mm -hmm. 